So what is a sine wave? This is a question we don't get too often actually, but a sine wave is really useful for uh, a lot of different things within uh, making video games. That would include having uh, nice rotating objects, smooth moving objects, orbiting objects. You can use it for a lot of different things. So before we actually jump into showing how to use sine waves in Project Spark, let's actually talk about the theory behind sine waves to give you an example or an idea of what they are. So sine waves are a mathematical curve and it's, it's like a wave pattern. You know, you have ocean waves, sound waves, light waves. These are all sine waves. And uh, sine waves are basically made up of sort of two pieces of a puzzle. You have frequency, which is the amount of oscillations per cycle or curves per cycle and the time where as time increases then the sine wave will continue on its wave-like pattern path. So if you remember from uh, possibly taking trigonometry classes or maybe you haven't take a, taken a trigonometry class that's fine you can still follow along with sort of what a sine wave is and that goes back to what sine is. So when you're solving a right triangle you might remember that you need to use sine cosine and tangent to help you find the length of the different sides of that triangle. And you also may have seen sine used in something called a unit circle. And a unit circle is uh, a circle with a radius of one. And that's really useful because as you are looking at a right triangle moving around this circle, or just a line moving around the circle, when you're calculating sine, you're going to see that sine is always something that oscillates between 1 and negative 1. And that's really useful because as a line is rotating around a circle, then it's moving from 1 down to 0, down to negative 1, back to 0, and back to 1. And this starts to trace a wave-like pattern if you apply it to a line graph. You can see in this little graphic right here how that translates to this, this wave-like pattern. Now you can use that to make really nice rotation within a 3D space. So let's go into Project Spark now and uh, we have this little piece of a castle pillar and we're going to do some nice things with it to show kind of how you can use sine waves. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a nice smooth rotating object right here. So let's jump into the brain of our object. And the first thing we, we want to do is time needs to be increasing uh, with every frame. That's kind of how, that's a really important piece of a sine wave. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a number variable. Uh, we're going to call it time. And for now, we're just going to have this increment or increase by uh, 0.1. So we have this number variable time that's increasing by 0.1. So time starts at 0 and continues to go up by 0.1 every single frame. Then let's bring in some movement here. So let's have this, this guy rolling. And now we bring in the sine piece of things. So we go over to the math folder, and you're going to see um, within the trigonometry folder sine um, right here. So you, you pick up sine, and what you want to have in this formula is sine and then time multiplied by the frequency. So we want to put that within a sub-expression. And a sub-expression, you can start within the math folder by putting a bracket at the beginning and a bracket at the end. So we have a beginning bracket, um, and then we're going to have, uh, we're going to bring time here. And for now, let's just multiply that by 50. And we're going to say that the, uh, the frequency is going to be 50 for now. And then let's just put an end bracket right there. So we jump into test. And you see a nice, smooth rotation right there. Now we can also use that for a uh, nice, smooth movement. So let's go ahead and ignore this line. And let's build a new line here. So we're going to start by having a nice, smooth movement on the x vector. Um, In-game is made up by kind of three vectors, and that creates a 3D space because you have three dimensions, and the first one is, is the x dimension, and you have y, which is up and down, and then you have z, which is uh, forward and backward. So we're going to do uh, position x. We're going to make that equal to position x, but we're going to add that plus this expression here. So plus sine, then we're going to put the um, time multiplied 
by frequency within these brackets right here. This is going to create an object which moves over a very long pattern. So uh, before we make any changes right there, let's just jump into test and see sort of how this thing has a, has a really long movement path. And we can change that movement path by increasing either the rate of time that passes or by increasing the frequency or the oscillations per cycle. So by simply going here and instead of making time increment by 0.1 every frame, let's just make it increment by 1 every frame. And now to offset that, we want to have um, the frequency, let's bring that down to something like, uh, something like 10. So jump back into test, and then you have um, a smaller movement path. But you see that this is a smooth movement. As it gets to the edges, it'll slow down and, uh, and bank appropriately. So now we can add that to another type of wave. So there is sine, but there's also cosine. And cosine, it, it's not called a cosine wave. It's actually called a uh, sinusoidal wave. And you can use sine and cosine together to actually make an orbiting object. So I've copied this uh, expression, and let's, uh, let's change the position to be z, because we're going to have it rotating uh, left and right and forward and backwards. And then let's have it plus cosine times the same, same amount so that we have a perfect circular rotation right here. So let's jump back in and test. Now that's going to make the rotation really fast, but again, that's something that you can change around with uh, changing frequency and time. So another cool way you can use sine waves is to make a tree look like it's moving in the wind. So we have our tree prop here, and let's show you how we put that together. So jumping back into edit mode. So we have uh, our conquer props here, and we have our tree trunk from the conquer props, as well as our um, individual branches that are part of the windy biome props. And each one of these is attached to this tree trunk at the base. And in every one of these different branches, we have just a sine wave helping its uh, rotation and a bit of randomness so that everything doesn't look to be moving at the exact same time. So let's jump into one of these branches and see how, uh, how we're doing this. So we jump into this branch, and what you'll see is we're starting out by setting a random number variable between 1 to 20. As integer, it means it just returns back whole numbers instead of decimal points of numbers. And that's just setting a delay for how many frames, now there are 30 frames per second, but how many frames it should wait until it starts its sine wave. So after anywhere between 1 frame and 20 frames, this branch will start um, increasing its time. Here we called it roll, but it's increasing its time just like we saw with the castle piece. And then it's uh, pitching at a sine of the uh, time multiplied by frequency. And then we're actually dividing this by 15 and um, dividing this all by a certain number or just reducing the numbers within here. That slows down the rate of rotation so it makes it a lot more subtle. And we just have this Basically, this, this code is just copied within each one of the branches. And you know you can add some more variety, which is what I did, where some of these branches are actually divided by a larger number or smaller number to have a bit more rotation happening or a bit less rotation happening. And uh, all that's put together, where each of these branches, you know they all have this uh, code within them. Now, you can use both sine and cosine, both perform waves. So uh, I'm using cosine in some of these, sine in some of these. Uh, Sine and cosine will both have, uh, have waves. The difference is sine has sine waves and cosine has sinusoidal waves. And all that combines to create a tree that looks like it's moving in the wind. So the last quick example we're going to show you with sine waves is making something like a pulsating mirage. So we talked about how you can use sine waves to increase uh, both the frequency and time to make a really fast oscillation. And that's what we have going on in this enchanted skull right here. We have a time increased by uh, one every frame and a frequency of 178, which is just below the 180 mark, which, you know, you think about 180 degrees is half of a circle. So 180, once you get up to there, times one, um, that is nothing will happen basically. But if you look for a range between 170 and 179, or 181 and 190, what you'll find here, let's just jump into test, 
what you'll find here is this cool pulsating mirage that that happens by Project Spark trying to keep up with something that is moving so quickly between points that every single frame it's between uh, a few different points right here. And the funny thing is we're actually recording this at a bit less than 30 frames per second, so um, you can't actually see the full effect. You're going to have to uh, go inside of Project Spark yourself and see this at work. But you can really play around with the frequency here and uh, slow this down a bit. Let's, uh, for instance, bring this, drop this down to, say, uh, 175. And you'll see the, uh, the oscillation, you know, gets, uh, gets a bit faster. So you'll have a, a mirage that more quickly has this uh, object look like it's slitting into two and coming back into one. Or you can bring this up to, say, 179 and have something that really slowly separates and then comes back together into one. So I hope these three things kind of showed you how cool sine waves can be used. There are many other use cases for them. Just experiment with sine waves and you can come up with some really fun things inside of your creation. Project Spark is where players create and creators play. What better way to be inspired than to see what's possible? This will surely spark your imagination. Now, how do we begin?